This is Brian Wolf with Wolf's Metal Fabrication. And I will be stopping in to see my buddies here at Siebert Custom Paint and Body in the little old town of Bradshaw, Nebraska to show you a little better demonstration of the shrinking disc in an actual real life repair situation. The car is going to be this 41 Lincoln. And here you can see I'm spraying some dicom on the panel. And I don't normally do this when I am doing a repair, but this is just so that you people viewing the video can have a lot better idea of the actual highs and lows because when you're actually in front of the panel, it's a lot different than when you're watching it on a video or looking at a picture. It's a sneak peek of what it's going to look like finished. The panel's damage was actually much worse and was dented in further than it is now. And unfortunately, it was roughed out quickly before the decision was made to make this video. But as you can see, there's still plenty of damage that needs to be repaired. In this portion, I'm probably doing some off-dolly hammering, holding the dolly below the dark blue sections with a little pressure and then tapping the higher bare metal spots and this in a sense raises the lower spots and lowers the high spots and gets them a little bit more even. If you hear a pinging noise that will be an on dolly right there you hear some pinging. That's an on dolly hit. I wasn't meaning to then but you can hear what it sounds like when I'm just generally preparing the panel here whatever seems to be necessary you know flattening or rearranging the metal kinda getting the low spots up and the high spots down you know straighten it as good as possible with the hammer and dolly you know and then when there's some creases that need to be taken care of we'll use some on dolly hammering for that to help just smash them flat, especially these creases. That will also stretch the panel, but that's not a problem since we're going to be running over it with the shrinking disc. Here I'm feeling the panel, and I notice a little bit of high spot there, that bare spot I pointed to, and that uh, low spot, the dark blue area still, so that's what I'm going to work on now. Try to tap that down some keeping the pressure on my dolly a little bit to the left of the hammer and kind of working that area and now I'm uh, got that crease there, that slight crease, I'm doing a hammer on dolly to flatten that as much as possible. Right now I'm showing you quite a bit of hammering. There will be a little bit of hammering in between the stages, but in an attempt to keep this video relatively short to keep your attention, we'll kind of bypass some of that, speed up some of the other portions, but I'll do my best to explain um, everything that I'm doing and the steps that I'm taking. And as always, safety first. You want to make sure you're wearing the proper eye and ear protection. Here I am taking some passes with the shrinking disc and then cooling it off with a mist from the spray bottle with soapy water in it and then I have a rag for drying the surface after the fact. So you notice the short passes and you can notice the steam and the sizzling spot when spraying the panel. Then you need to wipe the panel down and get it dry so that you can feel the panel with your hand and see if you need to take some more passes to see how the panel is responding. It was still a little warm so I sprayed a little bit more water on it to finish cooling it off. 
my left hand is my dominant hand, and it works the best for me. But everybody's different, so make sure you try both hands if you're new to this, because one hand may work better than the other. And make sure you use a flat hand, not your fingertips, or else you won't be able to properly feel the panel and the damage. You're trying to feel the variations from the different surfaces and find the extents of the highs and the lows so you know where to work. You do notice I am getting some discoloration of some blue areas on the highest and hardest contact points of the disc. That is not necessary, but it's not the end of the world if it happens. You'll get the hang of it after using it a little while and know that short passes are usually all that's needed. And there you could see the sizzling bubble around that blue spot. That means we're getting some pretty good shrinking. And even if it just steams, you know you're getting some shrinking. That's one thing I like about using water to cool the area instead of compressed air, especially if you're just starting. It gives you a, uh, a good sign if you had it hot enough or not. You also notice that, you know, with the short passes, you know, we're building some heat quickly and then we're cooling it. You don't want to run over the entire panel for a really long time to where you're heating the entire area all at once because the metal surrounding the area you're working needs to stay relatively cool as it is what is containing the heated area's attempted expansion and therefore that is what gives us the shrinking when we cool it because it all contracts. I was wanting to keep this video around 10 minutes and after I got into getting it ready for you I realized that uh, I was either going to have to exclude a lot of information or make it a lot longer. Um, so compromise a little bit. We're going to speed up the action and we're going to uh, make it just a tad bit longer than 10 minutes. But uh, I think it also helps when speeding it up to actually see the changes happen easier, you know, from the hammering and stretching to the uh, sanding to see the areas show up and then using the shrinking disc in between. And here we're taking some more passes with the shrinking disc, um, leveling some higher spots and doing some shrinking that needs to be done. And you notice that uh, the system is uh, shrink the disc, cool, dry the panel, check the panel. And checking the panel with your hand, as you can see you do very frequently, is very important because you need to see how your panel is reacting. Sometimes it's very difficult to tell if you need to stretch or shrink depending on the damage in the situation. If you're not getting the results that you were looking for, you need to stop, reevaluate what needs to be done, and change your course of action. And do this until you get the desired results that you were looking for. As you can see, I've been using the 4.5 inch disc for a little while now, and the blow nozzle for cooling as well. This is not for any particular reason other than show you the options and different methods. This is what I call the bonus dent. There was a dent that was filled with lead that wasn't part of the initial script for showing you guys for the repair with the shrinking disc. 
but it was bothering me and it was getting in the way and I decided that I'm just gonna go ahead and remove it and uh, add that to it. Um, ideally it would have had all the damage that we were gonna repair you know ready for repair before we started but uh, that's alright it's not a perfect world so here you can see the dent and now I am hammering it with the, uh, the dolly on the dark blue low spot of the dent and then hammering around the outside creased outer area to get that dent to pop back out. And I uh, use pretty good pressure when pushing on the back of that. And every once in a while I'll actually give it a, a bump with the dolly from the back to help pop that dent out. Here you can see easily that it's raised a lot of that metal back up. There was a couple spots I didn't like so I grabbed the hammer and dolly and went back to work. Um, either rearranging or stretching those areas um, to bring them out because that's the nice thing with the shrinking disc you know when you are repairing damage you know you can rearrange the metal and you can stretch the metal um, that's not a problem uh, with the hammer and the dolly the shrinking is the hard part unless you have a shrinking disc but once you have a shrinking disc and you're comfortable using it you're not afraid to overstretch an area while you're repairing it because it's super easy to just shrink it back down. Now I am going back with my hammer and dolly and attacking any leftover low spots that I don't like um, that I would like to make better. The uh, areas still have the, the blue dicum in them and uh, the technique that I'm using here is uh, the on dolly technique where the dolly is held directly behind where the hammer is being hit and uh, therefore it is smashing the metal and stretching it which um, raises the metal because it's got to go somewhere so it comes up and actually many times I find it a lot easier when using a shrinking disc to not be so worried about my hammer blows uh, and making sure that they are consistent and get the panel perfectly smooth because the shrinking just works so much better and easier at that final panel smoothing because of the large surface area and it, it just blends it out real well um, kinda like using a uh, long sanding block when block sanding a panel it just smooths everything out and gets it you know to a nice final finish and even though the the dicum is great for helping show the panel nothing beats feeling with your hand and as you can see here that's what I'm doing I'm feeling with my hand circling the last few spots that I'm just not a hundred percent happy with and then um, using either the hammer or the slapper like you saw there to do just a little bit of fine tuning um, of those areas um, to raise them up or rearrange them slightly if that's what they need and then we'll give a one last final sanding here and any other spots that I just don't like quite yet and we did not get this panel perfect by any means but uh, it's a heck of a lot better than it was to begin with now we'll give it just one final pass with the shrinking disc and we'll call her done and then you can see the different stages as we progress in the repair
and here's a snapshot of it before the repair and then after the repair very much an improvement and this whole time you've been watching from above I'll give you a little video shot from both sides just around the panel just a tiny bit of filler up at the top and then on the bottom by the leaded area some high build primer and we'll be good to go come over here and see how PJ's projects coming he's building a Model A and it's in pretty rough shape but uh, you can see more in one of the, my other videos uh, because he installs a set of our easy weld boxing plates and I uh, got some video footage of that going together.